What is the best test print for your 3D printer? Well, that kind of depends on what you're trying to test. Hey everybody, it's Joe, and if you look up online for test 3D prints, you will find a number of really cool examples. For example, this test print by Mwanadnibmudnidnwanjidnidj. All right. I know it's supposed to be Midnight Ninja, and I was the generation that invented Leet Speak, but trust me, if you put a bunch of numbers in your name, I'm going to try pronouncing them. This test proposes to test, well, everything. It's got a 20 by 20 calibration cube in it that sticks up above so you can't really measure the Z, uh, but it does test how far you can bridge without problems or it tests how far you can push your overhang and before things start falling apart. And this is all really good information to have if you're designing for 3D printing. It would be good to know how far you can push bridging, how far you can push overhangs before things fall apart. But if you're going to take your models and release them to the public, the best thing to do is to take one of these tests and print it on the lowest quality, cheapest 3D printer that you can, just so that you know how far you can push it on those machines. However, these things are not only affected by the machine, but also by the material. Different materials will be able to bridge farther and give higher overhangs, and sometimes by adjusting the settings, increasing the amount of fan, decreasing the amount of fan, sometimes increasing the speed or decreasing the speed, all of these things can change. And so the question is, what are you really testing with this? And maybe you're just testing to see, hey, can I make my 3D printer do all of these things? But how is that actually useful when you want to 3D print an actual thing? Do you see what I'm saying here? While this is a test and it tests something, how does this information help you? Now, I have to admit that I have also thrown my hat into this particular ring with a minimalistic test. This test has, if you print it with 0% infill, the top layers will give you an idea of how your bridging is going to look. There's also a scan of the New York Library Lion on here at miniature so that you can see how well it does with fine details. And there's a part underneath that requires supports so that you can see how well your supports work. I use this test when I'm testing 3D printers, especially if that 3D printer uses a different slicer, but just to see how well it's calibrated with its slicer. Does this give me useful information about what I'm going to be able to 3D print? A little bit, but not a whole lot. And the other thing is with these test only prints, what are you going to do with them when you're done? Afterwards, you've got a really ugly shelf piece and you're probably not going to keep these prints around. So they don't give a whole lot of really useful information. And at the end of the day, they're just garbage. But sometimes if all that you're testing is to see whether you've got your 3D printer set up properly and can 3D print, the best 3D print is something small, simple, and useful. This alligator chip clip is something that I modeled a long time ago when I started 3D printing. And it is, in fact, one of the first things that I ever 3D printed. And it's a useful print. You just take it and fold over a bag of chips and then slip this on here, and it helps to keep your chips fresh. Plus, you know, it's just kind of cute. It's a cute little alligator monster. So it's cute, it's functional, it's a good print. However, does it give you any useful information? It would be nice for a test print to let you know if there's something dramatically wrong with your 3D printer that you're going to need to address. And while a successful print of this alligator clip does tell you that your 3D printer is running, what if you've got some serious dimensional issues that you need to address? Now, quick aside here to 
Angus's test prints from Maker Muse. He's got a number of test prints where not only does he test the dimensional accuracy of your printer, but he also tests the gap abilities of it. 3D printers should be able to print multiple objects close to each other and not have them stick to each other. Now again, this is dependent, not just on the slicer, but the material and the 3D printer as well. But they are fun exercises to see if you can push your 3D printer to perform just a little bit better. And Angus's prints have some really cool rewards for doing that well. And if that's what you're doing right now, if you're calibrating your 3D printer, then tests like that that are fun, rewarding, and afterwards you can put on your shelf and it, it kind of looks neat sitting there, are a great place to go. And so if you're in that phase of trying to push your 3D printer to print just a little bit better, go check out Angus's gap test prints because they're very cool. There's also the seminal classic of the Benchy. This print has become the icon of 3D printing because Yes, if you're testing your 3D printer and your slicer setup and your material setup, it has good information on there like, can it do reasonable overhang? Can it do tall, thin parts that sometimes get a little too much heat and fail? Plus, when it's done, it is a cute little toy that you can let kids play with and it will float. Uh, maybe not upright, but it will float and so... It's a cute and fun print that you're, you're likely to actually keep around a little bit after doing. So I like the Benchy. However, if you are just starting out 3D printing and you want to know if your 3D printer is printing well, but at the same time have some indication if there's some major problem with it that you need to be aware of, well then you can't beat the Chuck Helberg calibration cube because not only does it print dimensionally 20 millimeters in all sides so that you can measure them and see how accurate your printer is printing but it also labels each of those dimensions so you know hey maybe i'm off in the x maybe i'm off in the y maybe i'm off in the z it is a good way to let you know that there's something major wrong or if everything is going fine that it's fine and you don't need to worry about calibration right now. Now that said, this is another print that when it's done, you're probably not going to keep around, but it is very, very small and it uses a very little bit of material. But what if we could have the best of both? A print that is fun, simple, small, gives you some useful information and that you're not likely to throw out? Well, I've got that for you here. It is the Print-A-Block Calibration Print. Just like the Chuck Helberg print, this one is labeled on the X and the Y and the Z so that you can measure against those dimensions to tell you if your 3D printer is way off and that you need to go into deeper calibration. But each one of those sides also has a Print-A-Block connector in it so that you can take it and connect it with other printer blocks and it's just a standard cube so when you're done with this print you can take it and add it to your growing collection of printer blocks and play with them later now this is the standard size for a printer block and each side should be 16 millimeters x y and z however if you're just starting out with printer block and you want something that's easier to manipulate Filament Stories discovered that if you scaled the printer blocks up to 150%, not a full 2%, but 150%, they still print well, they're easy to manipulate, and the clips still work very easily. This I would consider to be the standard mega block printer block size. So you might want to experiment with 150%. Or just stick with 100. I've done all of my printer blocks at 100%, and I'm, I'm vested at this point in 100%. So either way, I think it's very interesting that 150 worked out so well. But nevertheless, this is a useful print that gives you some good information at the same time. Oh, that seems to be all that the camera wanted to record. Oh, well. Well, since you're here... 
I wanted to show you guys another design that I had for this block that was a little bit more decorative. And this is an idea for printer blocks that I want to explore a bit. It's still got the X and the Y and the Z on it. However, these decorative elements are recessed slightly, meaning that if you pull out your calipers, you're going to have to measure it against the reinforcements that are around the holes. Not a big deal, it will work, but I think that the ones that are a bit more solid are a bit easier for measuring. So if you're doing this for calibration purposes or to know whether you should do calibration purposes, I think this one's better. This one though looks cool and it's something that I think that we can implement in the future. And hey, since you're here, let me just do one more plug for the Print-A-Block Skyforce Kickstarter, which is launching in a couple of days from when I launch this video. So if you're watching this video, either shortly after it comes out or two weeks after that, you can still get into the Kickstarter and there will be a link in the description that you can check that out. However, if it's after that point, well, don't worry. I hope that this video was still useful for you and you can still find out more information about where you can get print-a-block models of cool designs at printablock.com. That's print-a-block with no C because the, the URL was available. Anyways, I hope this video has helped you guys. I hope that you guys will enjoy printing my new calibration cube or just whatever you print. Make something awesome. Remember, you are special and thank you very much for watching. While you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and I'll see you next time.